Office and Microsoft 365 users can now import data from a PDF to Excel using Power Query. It's the same functionality that's been available in Power BI Desktop for a while now. It's super handy for importing data tables inside PDF documents because Power Query can locate them for you ready to import. And if the data is a little messy, we can use the Power Query transform tools to clean it before loading it into Excel or Power BI. Let's take a look. This is the PDF I'll use for this example. You can see it's mostly text and a few charts. And then on page seven here, we have a table. And again, on page eight, another table. And they're the two tables I'm going to import into Excel. Let's pop over into Excel. I've got an empty workbook here. So on the data tab of the ribbon, we're going to get data from file and then from PDF. Here I need to navigate to the PDF that I've saved on my PC. It's this one, so I'll click the import button. It's going to open the navigator window. On the left, we have the list of tables that it's found and all of the pages. I can click on the tables and get a preview in the navigator pane. And this is the second table with the various columns of data. We can also import the pages themselves and then parse that data. I'm going to check the box to select multiple items and I want the two tables. Now, if they're in the perfect layout, ready to load to your worksheet or into the Power Pivot model, you can click load and it will deposit the data there. I'm going to click transform data to open the Power Query editor window because my data is a little messy. We need to do a bit of work before we load the data into Excel. The first table here doesn't need too much tidying up. The first column is just an index number, which I don't need. So I'm going to press the delete key and get rid of that. The next thing I noticed is that it's not in the perfect tabular format, which I need for working in Excel. To be a tabular layout, it should have one column for the number of simulations, one column for the model and one column for the CMIP number. So let's quickly fix it. I'm going to start by duplicating the query. So right click, duplicate. The first query is going to contain my CMIP3 data and the second query is going to contain the CMIP5 data. So let's start with the first query. This is simulation data, so I'll call this one simulations3. And therefore I want to remove the CMIP5 data. So selecting those two columns, just hold down shift or control to select them both and then press the delete key. Now I need to add a column that identifies this data as CMIP3. So we'll give this column a name, CMIP, and the number is three. Click OK. So there's our CMIP number. Let's rename this model. And this query is done. Let's repeat those steps for this version of the data. Remember, this is my simulations five. And I therefore want to delete the two columns for the CMIP three data. Let's add the custom column for the CMIP number. This one's five, click OK. Now we've got our identifier there. I can rename this model and let's just expand this column. You can see here it's had a one appended to it. I'll just double click and remove the underscore and the one from the end. And that will just make this column name match the column name here. So that when I append these two queries, they're going to stack the columns on top of one another. So we're ready to append them on the home tab. I'm going to append the queries. Now I'm just going to append them as new just to keep it clean. The primary table is simulations three and the second one is simulations five. We'll click OK. And now we have one table of data stacked on top of one another containing both CMIP three and CMIP five. So let's change the data type for this to whole number. And we'll give this query a name, simulations. And with that, I'm ready to close and load. So let's take a look at the second table. Now it's a bit messier because the column labels are spread over multiple rows and some of them are also merged across two columns. If we go back to the PDF, you can see here, columns B through G have one column label for two columns. So that's going to cause us some problems, but we can clean that up with Power Query. So let's do that back in Excel. You can see we have 
one, two, three, four rows of column labels. And then if we look at column B, you can see it's got the column labels, but the second column for column B hasn't got any labels. And likewise, every second column, except for this one here, we'll come to that in a moment, is missing the column labels. So to fix that, we can go into the Transform tab, transpose the table, and now we have our four rows of column labels displayed as four separate columns. And with that, we can merge them together. Before we do that though, remember we've got some rows that don't have the labels. So what we can do is with the four columns selected, on the Transform tab, we can fill the labels down. Now we're going to have a problem with this one here. This label should be on this row. We'll fix that later. Obviously, when Power Query's imported the PDF, it hasn't been able to correctly identify that this column header also belongs to this row of data. So with that, I'm just going to merge the four columns together. So with them selected, right click, Merge Columns. I'm going to use the space separator because I want a space between each piece of text. We're going to leave the column name as merged. It doesn't matter what it is. We don't actually keep it in the long run. So I'll click OK. Now we have one column containing our column headers and the rest of the columns containing the data. So I can go ahead and transpose it back. There's our column labels. Now all I need to do is promote them to be the column headers. So on the drop down here, I can use the first row as headers and that promotes them up to the header level. Now I can just tidy up the couple of column labels that are incorrect. So this one here we can see has a space in segment. So let's just delete that space. And over here, this column should be called quantile of R blah, -de blah, -de blah. So I'm just going to double click and copy this one. Before I copy it, I'm just removing the carriage return or the line break. Control C to copy, double click this one, Control V to paste. And I just need to replace three on the end with five, press enter. And there is my table of data. It contains the quantile information. So let's name this query quantiles. Now it's important that you give your queries reasonable names because this name becomes the table name in Excel and in Power Pivot if you load it to the data model. So make sure you give your queries a name that's going to be useful. Now, before we load the data, by default, if you have tables that run over multiple pages, for example, credit card or bank statements, Power Query will automatically combine the tables into a single query table. However, in my experience, it doesn't always detect them correctly. And if this happens, we can specify a page range that we want imported from the PDF into a single query table. If we look at the source step in this query, you can see in the formula bar, it uses the pdf.tables function. Now this function has optional parameters that lets us specify the start page and end page. So what I'm going to do is just copy this line and we'll create a new query, right clicking in the queries pane, new query from other sources. And then at the very bottom, blank query. In the formula bar, I'm just going to control V to paste in the source. It's already got my PDF file path, so it's just saving me some time. And we can replace this parameter with the start page and end page parameters. So I want to start from page seven and end at page eight. I just want two pages. And with that, we just press enter. And you can see there it's listed the pages and the tables on those pages. And I can filter it further. So for example, if I only want the tables, I can select just the tables. And now I have two tables. I can click on them and get a preview in the bottom. And when I'm happy, I can click on the double headed arrow to expand the columns. Now it doesn't make sense to merge these two tables into a single query table because they contain different data. This would really only apply where you have tables that span multiple pages. So it's the same data continued across multiple pages. In this case, we have different tables of data across multiple pages, but just keep in mind, that's how you specify a page range. So we'll give this query a name just so you know what it refers to. 
and we're ready to close and load. So I'm just going to go to the Home tab and close and load too. And in the dialog box, I'm going to choose only create connection because I don't want to load all of the queries. Remember the simulations three and five are really only staging queries. So I'll click OK. You can see they're all loaded as connections. I'm going to right click on the ones that I want to load to the worksheet. So right click and go into load to here. I'm going to load this one to a table and it's going to pop it on sheet one. And there's our quantile data. And then again for the simulations one, this is the final appended version. I'm going to load to the table and we'll put this one on a new worksheet. And there's the data for my simulations. Well, I hope you found this technique useful. You can download the files for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.